So I'm hoping that they'll provide here. So it's a minus one. Yeah, so I think there is uh, something special about it. So it doesn't have to wait for the whole application. So I just think it's very happy to go to the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the green board being this is lady, uh, and he uh, connects the structure, uh, he structures the dwelling in the sense of uh, making, uh, and in this way he means that uh, the human interprets the place as he inhabits it. So uh, the architectural intervention uh, has, as you all know, uh, some uh, persons of preservation, imitation, wrapping, weaving, insertion, juxtaposition, superimposition, uh, subtraction. And the uh, creator should not be only an engineer uh, and to solve the, the, the person that solves problems and gives uh, forms, but also bricoleur, uh, which is the person who gives meaning to the forms. Uh, and an example of a um, proposal uh, is from the Game in his group about Manhattan. Uh, he proposed the, this uh, U-shaped uh, 10-mile uh, dam uh, to protect the, uh, Manhattan from uh, floods. <coughs> Um, protect uh, the world from natural disasters, 
at the same time, in the method of applying, is to give us different meanings by selecting the trace of the things used for the future. Child, 10 years or so, 
and now my generation, you know, uh, somehow we intuitively came together and figured out, okay, this uh, setting where we actually grew up for four years, you know, under grenades and so on, is disappearing. And we have this urgency to somehow preserve that, but it's gone because the city, you know, who developed, new architecture was built. So what we are going to do as some kind of anchor for this sense of memory, sense of place, uh, is to uh, bring back these ruins, the city we know, we grew up in, through augmented reality. So, but then that should be available only on that very place, exactly to bring this sense of place idea you know, back. So that, that is like our concept, our idea, in which we want to test how it will work really in reality. Um, so in that sense, it's very interesting. You want to preserve, you want to bring back this traumatic, you can say traumatic landscape, because for us that's part of our collective and personal identity. So it's a very interesting psychological phenomenon. I, I mean, I'm part of it, so maybe I'm pretty too close up, you know, so it's always good to, to look uh, around. So I would be interested, because I remember I talked one time with you, yes. that in Japan, in your culture, you really, uh, in, if I understood it right, uh, that you uh, actually like when things are gone, the traumatic things, the materiality of the trauma is gone, you don't want to preserve it. But then, you know, what have, my question would be, because it's very popular, at least um, uh, to my knowledge, uh, to use uh, catch, you know, some, like traditions from Japan, for instance, I think Kintsuki, uh, Kintsuki, do you or did I say it right? The one of preparing pottery with uh, golden, uh, so you, you preserve ah, the, you yes, yes, yes. I say it right, okay, you preserve the, 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 the cut, the break, and the person. but the, the pot still functions, let's say, but you see it's preserving golden yes, traces. Yes, yes. So that's for me interesting, uh, does this come really also in your built uh, uh, environment, or how does this work, and if you can reflect on that, because you sent us this nice photo, but we will, I think, connect this later, because it continue concerns and uh, dark tourism question, which is also a very important issue. So my question would be like, uh, um, um, I mean, you all, I think, more or less know about Hiroshima, the other yes. side, yes. um, because this is one of the yes. maybe first, well, what we I did a uh, war memorial sites of such scale, you know, planned and built yes. really intentionally. Uh,
game. <laughs> so every time some people come back. <laughs> and so, but the real world is not like this. So I think memory is very important. And also my experience, and I, I have a, one of the experience of the earthquake. But already my experience in the 20 years ago. So my students did not understand this. So only I talk, but they did not understand. Yes. Even when they are in at the memorial site. Yeah. But the only memorial site. They know, so they visit, but it's only knowledge. So every time I think to keep the memorial is very difficult. But the memorial site is maybe sometimes so to help to know what to think about the So in this case, it's kind of an educational tool, uh, the, man, the memorial. Uh, I, I think uh, where our discussion goes, it's quite interesting because we have two opposing things. You said, well, let's forget, and you said, let's do memory. Yeah. And for example, in, uh, there is an, uh, mm, uh, well, my statement is that uh, if there are mm, natural hazards, that people usually uh, invent things new after the, 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 the these kind of disasters. Uh, and for example, I don't know if you are aware of Lanzarote, it's an island in, uh, in the, uh, part of the Canary Islands. And there was uh, some, a couple of hundred years ago, a volcano eruption. And that volcano eruption was so strong that it covered all the earth of the of the west part of the island with kind of the three meters of the volcano how do you call that? Lava. Yes. Lava. Yeah. Yes. Is anyone from Spain or from this part of the area? Portugal? Portugal yes. and Bolivia have small yeah. Yes. And uh, what what is what does that mean? Uh, it meant that uh, there were about eleven villages and all pe most of the people were killed there. And, but the people they didn't have means for survival because they didn't have access to the land. Yeah, so they couldn't grow up food. So and uh, because of that, they invented a new way of agriculture, which is still there today, mainly for vineyards, but it's still there today. So the disaster was an opportunity for intervention. Yeah, and even if you look into the urban areas. Uh, what happens or what kind of opportunity is a disaster, if I may say so, that that's an opportunity. Most of the cities where the uh, disaster happened, like an earthquake, uh, it's an opportunity to redesign the city. Yeah, very many. So uh, it's very hard to say because uh, that a disaster is an opportunity, but it is. It is a kind of a great moment. Moment. 
but uh, Herman, uh, one of the lecturers at your course, uh, always says everybody loves disasters. You know, they give this sense of like you have to move and you know do something new. Yeah. There is this um, notion of survival, of moving on, of inventing, of you know reinventing yourself in a way. Yeah. So uh, uh, because that happens, uh, then you moved here, and then this was became a new hub and completely new world, a different world. Uh, and, but uh, you know. Preserving this memory for everybody's individual process, individual thing. So my professor, it's uh, my mentor, is a very traumatic uh, thing, and she hates this building. It's uh, she will never, never learn to love it in, yeah. in these ten years or so. She's still, you know, anchored to that place and that sense there. Whereas other people uh, really have embraced the opportunity. So there is this duality, you know, uh, uh, in this. Uh, I, I, at least I understand that's what yeah. you want to. To what you said about the opportunity to redesign and the opportunity for intervention, what would be your approach to the rebuilding exactly what was there before the tragedy, before disaster, like for example, of Warsaw, when the old, uh, old city was uh, rebuilt as it exactly was before? Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's a nice example because uh, uh, this is after Skopje earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after Skopje earthquake, there was um, in Yugoslavia, the authorities, they uh, managed, they invited the United Nations, uh, four groups uh, of architects uh, from abroad and four from Yugoslavia at that time. And uh, there were two winners, one from Yugoslavia and one was Kinsotani. So they shared the first award. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, 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 And uh, uh, well, they shared the first uh, award and uh, Possible. Impossible to proceed with the two very strong architectural themes to join their solutions. Uh, and when you mentioned Warsaw, and they were then not very lucky because exactly at that time the Warsaw Commission to rebuild um, stopped with their work in Warsaw. Yeah? And they came to Spokane. Stopped everything. <laughs> uh, no, just telling this story, it's uh, it, it's very hard to, to tell in my eyes to tell it very generally because I think we should go from one case to the, to another. I think the work which was done in Warsaw is fantastic. I was needed, and the people wanted it because they identified uh, with that, and for them it was extremely important that they get it back. Yeah, but then they went to Skopje, the same people, yeah. and there was conflict. Yeah, but the uh, sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I mean, it's so sad. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. But uh, in difference of my experience, so also we have an earthquake, and many party want to change before earthquake. The party want to um, this, uh, make the new city, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's very difficult for that is a voucher for land owner and also a lot of building owners. And uh, why is uh, my municipality want to change it? Because uh, there is a lot of discrimination area. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the person knows that this area is not a good or bad. But the uh, earthquake clean and <laughs> but everything destroyed. So we change everything. So the younger generation do not know so where is the bad area. So no bad so, areas. Why is Isn't 
take it into account right at the start when talking about rebuilding versus not rebuilding. Some things are fixable, some things you have to start completely again, some things there's middle ground, and you can add the new things while stabilizing the old. Um, so I think the discussion between material scientists, engineers, architects, and um, say policy makers, and particularly stakeholders, uh, is an incredibly important one so that we can set the, the reality of what we're actually dealing with rather than purely working on a philosophical and emotional level. Yeah, this is precisely my argument from my own city, Sarajevo, because there was no uh, any consensus or any kind of plan or idea of what to do after four years of being, you know, a bomb. Uh, so they just intuitively went into, you know, making rebuilding architecture and most of the, I think the eighty percent of it is really bad architecture. Definitely and socially is not sustainable however you want it. So in that case if you think of Warsaw and then complete reconstruction, uh, at least there was some kind of plan and agency and idea why to do that, even though when you stand there you think I'm in a pessimism of something, you know, I mean I'm in a fake uh, monument, you know, in a way. But it, uh, there were reasons for this when you look at the time, and you know it, it had reference. You know, so to the, compared to the situation in my own city, uh, I think it's much more disastrous uh, what happened in Sarajevo than what happened in Warsaw. We have to kind of evaluate it. So that's why we want now to bring that because we see it as a heritage that we are losing. Actually, we lost for the most part, but we are trying to preserve something through documents or archives that we have from that time. So if we come back to the question of active archiving, what we had in the last session now. Uh, you also, uh, from a heritage, because we you didn't introduce normally, uh, I don't know, are you just getting from a... Uh, oh, uh, so I'm, I'm based on the University of West Indians University, okay, and okay. I lead the Heritage and Crosswire project, where um, we look at the impact of politics and politics on the okay. structures. All right, yes. Oh, so, that's perfect. Yeah. And that actually comes, uh, there's an interesting dimension there where I would actually argue um, that heritage should be the last thing that is going to by the construction. Oh, you mean uh, heritage that the, 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 yeah, the, the, the previously the cultural heritage? Yeah, like a, a yeah. yeah, because at the moment what we're seeing in conflict zones are knee jerk reactions, uh, feel good projects, mm -hmm. done in a hurry, done like very poorly planned very insensitive, uh, especially when you talk about conflict damage, it can be very damaging to the fabric of the material, uh, which isn't properly integralized. I would always say, you know, because it's got such an emotional attachment to it, yes. leave it last. Leave it until people have started working for yeah. PTSD, they've started making decisions with a little bit more distance, rather than what we see now with, like, for example, Palmyra being mm -hmm. reconstructed. Um, with the materials that are now inadequate structurally, and the everyone's going, yay, go on, so we're like, we, we can start this heritage. Uh -huh. So then, that sounds like a comment in the Warsaw case. Uh, yeah. Could you comment on that? Yeah. Because that was actually the thing. Like, I remember that the, uh, the, the story of Warsaw, Warsaw was that they were collecting all of the bricks around the country to rebuild the historic center. It was like, let's do it now, because that was believed as the most important the center of new politics. That's yeah. what happened. Whereas I'd say, you know, reconstruct the houses, the hospitals, the roads, yeah, schools, exactly. then think about the heritage. Because yeah. then people have gained some sense of normality back in their lives, that they have the basic amenities that they need. So why, why are we pushing heritage to the forefront there, other than as a, a plaster on the wood, rather than a, a, a structural yeah, yeah. support for society? It's something that takes time and consideration and, you know, a, a really, really good planning. Yeah, that point. Yes, sorry. I have a couple of questions. So, so first, the first question is, and I'm trying to, to open or to look at a different perspective, and I don't really have a say in it, but I'm just trying to, to see if we can discuss this slightly. Uh, there seems to be an agreement or, or an assumption of the role of an architect in precisely a healthy role, whether remembering or forgetting or remembering. Mm -hmm. There is an assumption that the architect has a role, has a say, has an active role, and, uh, and this role is should be or people perceive it as a healthy one. But in many cases, the architect is actually the center of the problem. So whether the old UDAP problem, building, being set on fire, uh, fire and grease for planning led to uh, a destruction. Grant the tower. Prime <laughs> Under renovation, material that's not very uh, adequate or, uh, or should be 
used for that purpose. So maybe you should also try to think, I'm not an architect myself, I'm not going to teach in architecture school, but maybe you should also try to think less of our involvement as, as agents or as active agents, as leaders, and more as followers of, of, the, of the natural or organic processes that emerge within the community. I, I'll just bring a very, very uh, small example from my work on, on Paris, which is not very directly related to this, but. Uh, but I'm working on Paris about the terrorist attacks and, uh, and the memorization of the terrorist attacks in Paris. And uh, I went to the field assuming that the government wants people to forget. So the government has been removing all the, the places where the flowers and the candles and the, and the pictures have been placed. And uh, that's because the government is very selective and it wants to show Paris as a resilient and a strong city. But then when I had introduced the people in the field, it was completely different. People who live around these sites did not want to see this for a long period. It was too much for them. So, but that's the, the example might be relevant to the core of what we're talking about, but just thinking of, of our role as architects, what we assume, what we think that we can do better in relation to what happens among the community. Among the yes, exactly. So the, can I just present some data? I was just talking with, with you there uh, uh, about this, uh, the most recent example, for instance, uh, in, in uh, Holland is Amsterdam, but we just came to building for a national monument for Holocaust uh, victims of the uh, Holocaust people who deported from Amsterdam. And I think this process, and here it really touches uh, on, the, uh, on the question of what is the role of architect in all this, uh, because uh, I believe that architects actually should take more active role, but in the sense of educating the, the so they first have to educate themselves, and then educating their clients, you know, the, the uh, other disciplines about how these processes should and could be done. Because in this case, uh, you have a commissioner who was fighting for that memorial to be built for 12 years. It's a very long process to have that monument built, which will, in, that's instant heritage. It becomes, it's built as with the notion of becoming a heritage or a place for future generations. And then the commissioner uh, gives it to the star architect who makes just his you know, master brand design and it's put in public space, nobody's consulted, and uh, then you have a court case. You know, because people don't want to look at it uh, every day uh, from their window. So in my view, especially Daniel Liebeskin, this tradition of pop star architecture, uh, is somebody who has the authority and knowledge on building these kind of spaces, right? He should, he built so many, uh, it's a story on its own, uh, but uh, he knows what it means to build a national monument for, for, a, for, for a country. So he's the one, in my view at least, who could have told the commissioner, the Oceans Committee in this case, Please, uh, this should be an open call. You, sh you should not only consult, but really invite the citizens, people who are going to look uh, at this monument on a daily basis to the process of commissioning and making it, you know, and then other steps. Uh, and not only accept that and say, here, this is this present for me, you know, uh, for a national monument. So these kind of processes are really outdated. They belong to pre-war, pre-First World War, uh, uh, manner of making monuments as you know symbolic icons in public spaces. They are outdated. They cannot. Um, as this we have to reevaluate, and then we should not allow this to happen today, because there are many problems I see with this kind of approach. So then it also comes back to your argument that we need to discuss and have some kind of framework, some platform from where we can discuss. But we are not in a place where we have this still. Uh, if I just because you work really with the heritage, uh, with this topic uh, in field. Uh, um, so, so for me, the question for you would be, uh, uh, again, from Sarajevo case, I, we have cultural monuments, cultural heritage, which indeed got the first primarily like care after you know, it was uh, reconstructed, rebuilt completely, even better than it was before it was destructed, which I think is again a problem, because you create something, you know, again, new, that looks like old, but what is it really? some kind of hybrid. There was no trace of destruction left whatsoever, like in the case, like in example you showed us, uh, Pinacotec and so on. You know, no kind of strategy uh, to, to do that. And then uh, the issue of uh, new heritage, new war heritage. Because some buildings got such a symbolic value during the conflict, that they become, you know, just an office building. It was so important during this period that it became, in, in the collective view, of heritage itself, but it was not really proclaimed heritage. It's in this ambiguous in-between zone, and we still, I think, to my knowledge, don't know what to do with this uh, this kind of heritage. Uh, you know. Uh, so that's another question. Uh, when I'm thinking about training people uh, in the field, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're professionals or in the army or whoever, 
whoever is first in sight, their duty of care is to stabilize. Because, especially complex heritage can get destroyed twice. First, you know, when you get the impact, crossfire, things like that. And the second one is neglect, looting, um, anything that could deteriorate building. So actually, heritage has that sort of two sets of risks that are attached to it. So the first, first thing that's needs to be done is stabilization. Mm -hmm. yeah. Prevent further damage. Yeah. And that is it. Don't miss it. Stay it. Yeah. Um, and then we're in the back of you. Uh, it's it's what should be uh, underestimated. You bring this up very beautifully. Is that damage can be heritage in its own right. Mm -hmm. So you can have heritage layered on heritage, mm -hmm. or you can have a completely unremarkable space that suddenly becomes big on heritage. Mm -hmm. Like the um, uh, one of my favorite examples, the Dublin Post Office. The Dublin Post Office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Georgian building, you trip off them in Dublin. Like, it's a nice building, but they're wrong. Perfectly adequate, lovely, mm -hmm. but nothing spectacular. But because it's got the bullet holes from 1916 uprising in them, suddenly tourists pop into it. Like, there are people taking pictures and like, pointing at bullet holes. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think it should be underestimated how much heritage value these sites can get afterwards, no matter how big or small they are. I mean, think about the World Trade Center, for example, after terrorism. They were skyscrapers, they were, I guess, iconic, but architecturally, I mean, I can't come up with some geopologist. Mm -hmm. I was told they were just like, two big rock rifles. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's what it looked like to me. Um, but now suddenly it's become one of the primary sort of heritage sites in Manhattan. Like, it's got a huge emotional look to it. And they're heritage sites because they know what they're doing. So it's kind of the irony. Because of the absence. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. So, I was never underestimate the complexity of heritage layered on heritage or heritage that's sim that's singularly there because of an act of violence or a disaster. But I don't understand this time pressure. I mean, I understand after post disaster planning strategies has uh, is under the time pressure to um, build um, I don't know living places for people who lost their flats. Uh, Okay, I understand this time pressure. Let's do it very quickly. And our question, oh, it's gone. Uh, the other question, uh, should we do that to, um, you know, rebuild new parts of the city, like in uh, the case of school care, should that, that be done to architectural institutions? But for uh, heritage, what's the main reason uh, the pressure? We have to reconstruct it immediately. This cultural identity evolution. Because the, so this has become one of the big things, uh, like within Blue Shield, for example, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the documentation that they publish is all about protecting heritage, first and foremost, because it is the, it's the integrity of social fabric. Mm -hmm. So this, which is also one of the reasons why heritage gets targeted during mm -hmm. conflict, it's erasing the identity of your yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's yeah. trying to reverse that. So, no, we still okay. exist, no, we're still here, no, this is our identity. Okay. So it is important from that point of view. But as I said, it's then the knee-jerk reactions of the rushing that actually can then do damage to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's there. There is quite a lot to talk about. You know, to have to be right alongside medical care and uh, you know education and all these things. Um, and so yes, it is very much on the map there. Um, but as I said, the nuance for me would be you know be careful about time frames. Sure. Um, it is that it is it's a fact that it's influencing and ravaging um, 
on a pragmatic level, heritage, you know, the more people you have working on a certain site, so the more measures you have to take to preserve it. Uh, um, and then, of course, there is the question of um, uh, simplification, of course, and uh, what does it really mean for preserving the specific memories, specific narratives. Uh, so this is an interesting question, I think, uh, uh, to, to ask. I mean, where do you put outreach, for example? Yeah, because uh, they have huge problems, of course. With, uh, yeah. And also this ethical um, um, uh, chase that is lately, you can see it um, in the, on the internet, where people take selfies and you know, strange actions and then they put it out there on the internet uh, for everybody to see and then that's heavily criticized. And, uh, yeah, you have it in Berlin when they did with the shaming. The yeah, they call it the Holocaust or something yeah. like this. Yeah. Photoshop Jews, like the Jews in the background, just shame them. Yes. They're actually like, um, I mean, um, it was designed also to be an anti monument to be served that people can use it as it was. So there's the architect is trying to communicate one thing, and the people are actually in his mind uh, using it the way they're supposed to, but actually they're still being shamed by society. Yes, so yes. There's also this gap between the architect. Yes, so this is. Yeah, really, the, 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 this memorial was built to yeah, communicate a specific traumatic memory, which already was too big a task, I think, for one memorial, but... Uh, because, as you said, like, when we saw the people going into the memorial and the sinking heads, and what God talks about, the event will not have, it only be possible to happen for the people to act with the memorial in such a way, uh, was only possible because it was not anticipated as well. So it is very important that people act with the memorial, um, and the that's how he wanted yeah. it to be. Yeah. But then the other people who have actually created this shaming in a way don't think the same way. Yeah, many would argue that already that this memorial provokes debate and keeps provoking debate since it's, it's yeah. conceived and built is already a success. You can, yeah, uh, yeah this is also one uh, side of the topic. Uh, but again, I have to come back to my own practice and the project I'm working on at the moment. It's for Sarajevo's tunnel. It's a, something that people dug under the airport that, that structure save the city and then it was after the siege was finished it was um, um, not needed anymore so I started to it, it, it was the only entrance and exit out of the city. So the people had to go through the tunnel how far off four kilometers? Uh, it, it's how many meters more or less? Eight hundred meters but you know it, it was too low of course so they had they were eight hundred meters in very strange physical position. And uh, the entrance, uh, I think the entrance was not pretty secure. No, there, there was massacres happened on both right. exits and entrance, and it was very, uh, uh, very uh, dangerous place, uh, uh, way of crossing because there was electricity and all this going through that tunnel. But nevertheless, it saved really the city uh, because food and weaponry and all, all kinds of necessary stuff went through it. But the, what I want to raise here is that. Basically, uh, the moment the siege was lifted, this site was forgotten. Only the private family that recognized, aha, this could be potentially uh, a money, uh, money machine, they preserved their uh, home, which was used as an entrance to, uh, to this tunnel, and uh, 20 meters off the tunnel, and they turned it into a private museum. And this private museum today is a, a, a state museum, government took uh, control over it, they had a competition, I got that competition, to make a memorial museum on both sides. Uh, but the fact is that um, uh, I decided to make this building to participate in this competition because the number of tourists is so large that the site is so tiny that it cannot accompany, cannot receive all these tourists. And these 20 meters of authentic structure are deteriorating because they are inside of the ground, people are crossing over daily, you know, buses coming, and it's a really enormous amount of tourists coming, and every year it's more. Um, uh, and then, but this site would not have become heritage if this family has had not, that's my hypothesis, that they did not recognize the potential of this site. And now 30 years after, so this psychological process of art after the atrocity, now, you know, there is, aha, uh -huh, indeed, this, this is actually heritage site. It's very, say, the city, aha, uh -huh, let's, you know, we should do something about it. It became heritage of such importance that, you know, it's now, but it took 30 years and it took individual effort uh, because if this family was not there, nothing would have been left. Then we would have to reconstruct it probably. I don't know how that would look like, if that's even possible and so on. So, but the tourism in this case was the uh, machine that uh, helped this heritage 
being born or how, how would I say that? So, so in that sense, I see that dark tourism can also have positive uh, effects in certain contexts and specific situations. But in general, it is a problematic issue, uh, um, which impacts our heritage. Uh, not only dark heritage, not only difficult heritage, but I think the heritage in general, how we from Venice and what's happening today there to, to all other sites. Shall we continue to uh, introduce? I do want to present. Oh, sorry, I don't need to be getting a monologue here. Yes, yes, yes. It's very interesting. Okay. I have to leave. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your presentation. I only show some photos. one of the dark tourists, but uh, I don't think so. <laughs> so. And the first one is uh, uh, Kobe Asko, so maybe some uh, maybe not uh, already. Uh, so this is happened in 1995. So Kobe is my hometown. So uh, it's very shocking um, Asko, so the, after that it was like the, after war. Mm -hmm. so every, um,
decide to keep it? But was there a particular story? That's why they chose this one. Yeah, I don't know whether there is a lot of TV building or not, but uh, I think uh, I don't know the detail, but uh, I think community is Community, because bottom up. Yeah, yeah. Uh,
and traditional architecture, traditional way of building architecture, so not what homes was not before its destruction. So in that sense, maybe that's your argument as well. It could be interesting to hear what you also think about it. Um, yeah, Sarah, there is a whole new, there's a whole new uh, idea that there's a big demographic change. Mm -hmm. um, all the generation like, like me, for example, <laughs> went almost 90% yeah, of, uh, of the, the youth went out of uh, Syria. So the, and uh, yeah, the new generation it wants, does, does not want anything related to the war, but at the same time, um, yeah, old people who used to live in this kind of architecture maybe won't accept the, the, uh, the new idea of architecture. They want something that, uh, that is totally uh, imitating to what was before. So the whole demographic, uh, yeah, it's very hard to, to uh, think about reconstructing, reconstructing Syria nowadays because this war has not ended yet. So we are in a continuous uh, process. Exactly. How can we make a memorial? How can we think about uh, reconstruct, reconstructing a, a city uh, if we don't know who's, who's going to, to live in it? But she does it, so that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, it is. It, there is a lot of de debates, and a, a, a people are against or with her. her uh, okay, so there is a discussion. Uh, yes, that's what I wanted to hear. Uh, yeah, because I find it very fascinating, and she's recognized here in Holland. This yeah, yeah. Uh, as somebody who really is humanistic and thinking progressively and you know giving these new ideas to something that is ongoing and terrible. Yeah, it's very controversial. <laughs> it's very okay, so I assume yeah. I mean this is always always these topics are controversial, but still yeah, there's a question. Yeah. No, I mean in other cases there's time actually. Yeah. Can you just Portugal, as I uh, already said. Uh, this has been very interesting, and this leads me to three different projects and a question, uh, which is, when we talk about uh, people's needs of regaining their identity uh, is one thing, and when we talk about uh, using a building or building a new building uh, to act uh, as a memorial building, we are talking maybe more about memory. So. Uh, when we say that people feel the need of regaining their city again, the city that has fallen apart because of an earthquake or a fire, should we be talking about identity or memory of something that they can relate to in a more visual way? Because when we talk about identity, I relate uh, not only to the visual side of it, but also to uh, construction techniques, the materials of the places, and when we talk about memory, is much more vague. And so, 
by asking you this, I talk about three different uh, projects. One is from Finland, a church that has been destroyed by a fire. And so people, uh, stu people uh, had one entire year to discuss what they should do. And what happened was a magical thing. So people had this uh, urgent, uh, urgency of regaining uh, their church but they didn't want to do it anyway. So they decided that they should do it in a longer period of time, but with the traditional techniques. And so people started volunteering to help doing the church. So you had someone that had this uh, wood uh, cutter machine and it would uh, give to, to the constructors and people would volunteer to do the work itself. And then I have another example, which is in my country, in Terceira Island, which is an area very affected by earthquakes. So in the 80s, uh, there was this earthquake, and people lost their homes and their church, which, which was the centerpiece of a small village. And before people felt the need of rebuilding their homes, they felt the need of rebuilding the church, which was the centerpiece. And so they asked people if they, sh they wanted to do it faster using concrete or if it would take longer, but do it with the traditional materials. Mm -hmm. And it was so important to them to have that memory again that they decided that they wanted to do a copy of the old church, but using concrete. And so faster. yes, faster, <laughs> yes, because it was really important. And another example, which is also in Portugal in Lisbon, in the 18th century, there was this earthquake and the majority of the city fell apart. So they noticed that using uh, stone was not a, a proper way of uh, doing housing there. So they decided to do those wooden structures, which we called Gaiola Pombalina, because our ministry at the time was Marquês do Pombal. So these wooden structures are inspired in some Arabic or Muslim uh, constructions because it works really well with uh, the um, energy uh, that goes through the building uh, during an earthquake. And so they found a way of doing something that was not related to the place itself, but evolved the, the buildings in a way that made them last longer and be more resistant. So we have three different approaches. What do you think about this? Is it identity or memory? I think it's always both, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be something that is much more um, tangible, un untangible, it's much more abstract. It's very individual as well. Yeah. And uh, we know from psychology that we cannot rely on memory. It changes. It's, uh, so this, again, uh, the project I'm working on, uh, and the people I work with, they imagine this uh, augmented reality reconstruction, for instance, of these uh, ruins and all that, to be really realistic. That's how they imagine this. Yeah. So that you are in the space and it's exactly how it was, and it's a yeah. little bit dramatic even, you know, like the, the most dramatic moment of that destruction. That's what they have in their hands. So these are movie makers, uh, also architects, uh, I don't know, designers, uh, artists, other people, other disciplines. So this is uh, you know, from, from their perspective, and then I talk with experts uh, who, uh, for instance, they, they work on the construction of Bergen-Belsen, of uh, uh, um, what's the name, Westerbork in Holland. You know, uh, places that don't have any more the infrastructure of former Nazi camps, so they now want to uh, reconstruct this also in digital reality. Yeah. Uh, and these experts who work on these projects, they are they are we are supposed to work with them, and they argue that we should not reconstruct this as, um, uh, as, as, as we think it exactly was, because we don't have enough uh, archive material to really support our image of it. It's realistic, you know, uh, we have some uh, footages, but it's not enough, of, obviously, if you want to recreate sense of place. But that we should uh, especially not uh, do artistic projects or like from our own memory, yeah. because their argument is th this is, this is not a uh, scientific source. We need to create scientific platforms so that only in that way you can uh, uh, transmit the memory for future generations and make something actually valuable. So what they do, uh, these sites, is they make like SketchUp, it's like a SketchUp model, it's a very abstract, uh, they only reconstruct the structure of the camp, not the barracks, for instance, themselves, so you don't see materiality, the, you know, what kind of wood, and, uh, you just know where these barracks more or less were in the space, so you walk this augmented reality up uh, around, and there is a narrator who who maybe follows your walk, but this is from court sessions or you know some 
so documents are used to to try to uh, reconstruct the memory of it, if you can call it like that. Um, so, so this this is kind of a answers. I mean, leans to all three examples more or less, you know. But then also you. For me, it was interesting this example where people really wanted fast yeah. this church rebuilt. Yes. Uh, so uh, sorry, yeah. drop. So sometimes what I feel is that um, this urgency of having something that you can relate to very fast because you need to reestablish normality as fast as possible. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it might lead us to lose some parts of identity because yes. construction techniques, local materials, the way that people did things. Yeah. That's what makes us want to yeah. regain the elements back, but once again, we are losing some parts of it by doing it with other materials or by trying to do it faster. <coughs> so, don't using the original techniques or not trying to understand which were the original techniques. Yeah, it's That's why I ask about identity. memory yeah. and not identity. Yeah, yeah because the case, for instance, in Mostar in, in Bosnia, uh, the, the beautiful uh, Ottoman bridge that was uh, completely destroyed, that was <coughs> in such a way that you cannot build like that. Yes, like that. yes, yeah. many more. So they had possible. to you know, <laughs> reconstruct it the best way they could. But if it's possible, that of course would be the best way. Yes. But then I, th I think at least that we would come then again to the role of art, that, that architect as an activist who has to educate and explain yes. the value. Yes. So hope and hope that he can make change. That's yes. I think the only way we can. Uh, yes. But it, this leads me to an, a second question, yeah. which is uh, how important it is to invite people to join in and to actually have a role in construction yeah. and in, uh, mm -hmm. in the rebuild of, of their own spaces. Because we as architects have responsibilities, we must advise the clients or the people, but we also have to remind that we are designing for people. Yes. And so people have something to say, and sometimes it's very important to make them comfortable to avoid controversy and yeah, this is those issues. Yeah, problematic issue in general. All around, probably dealt with this. I haven't been told, but I yeah, just to the, exactly the question of previous round yes. yes. Because everybody yeah. says we should have a cause and process. I also yes. say that. But how do you do that? Yes. Really, it's really problematic because, again, it depends on the context, you know? Mm -hmm. And there are always people who have different opinions, different values, yes. different ideas. So there has to be some unifying platform to do that, but I think nobody really knows how. So in my view, we have to look to practices to really in the field. You can say maybe also more about this. Uh, yeah, um, uh, thank you for uh, explaining those three examples. Uh, of course, I as an architect, I like very much the inventory part <laughs> because basically architects are innovators. Yes. Uh, uh, so learning from some uh, past uh, experiences and learning that they do not work and uh, trying to find new ways, new paths, uh, so people would need better earthquake which comes would not destroy their lives and their uh, goods. Uh, I think that's, yeah, that, that's something that the humankind makes progress through these kind of things. But also what you talked about Finland, you know, involving the local community, uh, a community and to bring the, the people, I think it's extremely important and to find a kind of consensus or at least to discuss that. And, uh, so that it's, because uh, the church is a public place, right? So everyone basically in that community has, um, is using it or, well, those who go to the church and uh, if it's gone, I, I, I think it's the most normal pro process to discuss that, how, in what way, so on. Yes, advice by the architect, I guess, in, in a certain way. Uh, and I think that this kind of um, uh, active society is necessary. Uh, and uh, I'm also, I'm only not, not sure if this is our task uh, to organize this uh, um, society, but uh, I, I think we should collaborate with those disciplines that do that. And I think we don't, we don't collaborate enough. Yes. I can add to this, sorry. I think we know from psychology of bereavement that it's very important that people are included in the process of rebuilding, warning, you know, that it all yes. contributes to their psychological health. The studies show that. Yeah. Uh, so it's a matter of how you do that. So I don't know, I'm just now inventing. Uh, in that case, you could have built provisional or temporary cathedral yes. and then 
invest time to make this one? Yeah, sure. Instance, I don't know. So that's part amazing. of planning how, uh, uh, well, we were talking about more urgent uh, kind of services, but somehow sometimes to take uh, the necessary time to make decisions and make everything happen is important so you can create temporary infrastructures, yes. Um, it's just that people sometimes feel so much in need that they want things fast, but, um, and the things that can relate to also, uh, just to prevent, and prevent them from feeling um, unsatisfied or unhappy, which is must worth in a long term uh, period. Yeah, I did mention to the class yeah. last time this example of what happened in Norway, in building memorials there for the Breivik attacks from 2011, and uh, uh, they wanted this gigantic uh, a memorial there, but uh, the people, the, it is a bit more complex than I'm mostly simplifying here, but it didn't happen in the end. What happened in the end is really uh, making memorials to collect a process of recovery by inviting the families of kids were murdered to build that memorial together with designers and, uh, and the ones working on that island. Yeah. So I think that that's a valuable example for this. And then you can use these maybe examples to show this to these communities. Look, this what really works. Yes. And you know we can do it like this and let's try. Yeah. Let me read it because I don't speak Finnish as you might. Oh, I'll talk to you later. Oh, yes, yes.
And can we see that there is a material perhaps for a couple of papers or something like that, we can develop that because I think it would be a pity that this remains here in this room. Uh, perhaps we can present that at a different kind of level, yes. But first, especially you with your order, with the churches, I think we would all like to know where yes, exactly they are, <laughs> where they are placed and so on. And I'm sure you all have more, much more ideas. So, and you guys anyway have to write a thesis, so. <laughs> <laughs>